Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, five of my favorite scenes in all of literature. Uh, today's topic was a suggestion from my buddy Blue. Thanks for the suggestion. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. I'm not sure how long this video will be. Uh, I want to go into details, but also beware of spoilers. I will give you just enough time. I will hold up the book and give you enough time to click away. Uh, in case you have not read the book or uh, spoilers would completely ruin the experience for you. The first one is The Weight of This World by David Joy. I'm going to let you guys click away if you need to. Um, I will try to remember to do time stamps. That way you guys can just jump to the very next thing. But uh, anyway, so there's a scene in here where the, the two main characters show up at a drug dealer's... Uh, uh, well, at, at his home to, I think it's to, to either sell or to buy drugs. And there's a scene where the guy thinks the gun isn't loaded. And so he puts it to the side of his head and pulls the trigger and blows his brains out. I am not do, doing this scene anywhere near enough justice just by telling you that. The scene caused in me an actual jump scare when I read it. I, I, I couldn't believe it had just happened. I was like, "This has got to be a dream. It can't. This can't be. This can't be happening." Kind of thing. And then slowly, it started to bleed in that this actually happened. Uh, the reason why it's on this list is because it comes out of nowhere. But I should have seen it, and I have been thinking about it at least a couple times a week since I finished reading the book months ago. Um, in fact, I was just joking around on Twitter the other day when people were talking about jump scares in movies. I said, my favorite jump scare is in The Weight of This World by David Joy. And I said, was that a movie? No, it's a book, but it's got a hell of a jump scare in it. So that's number five. Another thing is, I'll probably do another one of these videos. It was very hard to limit myself to just five. Um, so if you guys like this video and you want to see more um, of my favorite scenes of all time, just let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Up next, we have... After Dark by Haruki Mirakami. You guys have a chance to click away if you need to. Again, the time, uh, the time signatures will be down there. Um, but this one, it's literally the. O I think it's the opening scene. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna see uh, eyes mark. Yeah, eyes mark the shape of the city. Through the eyes of a high flying night bird, we take in the scene from midair. In our broad sweep, the city looks like a single gigantic creature or more like a single collective entity created by many intertwining organisms. Countless arteries stretch to the ends of its elusive body, circulating a continuous supply of fresh blood cells, sending out new data and collecting the old, sending out new consumables and collecting the old, sending out new contradictions and collecting the old. To the rhythm of its pulsing, all parts of the body flicker and flare up and squirm, Midnight is approaching, and while the peak of activity has passed, the basal metabolism, basal metabolism that maintains life continues undiminished, producing the baso continuo of the city's moan, a monotonous sound that neither rises nor falls, but is pregnant with foreboding. Um, all, the, all of that opening section, just the way this book opens, period, is, a, is amazing. Uh, the visuals that uh, Mirakami is able to to bring out to evoke in, in your mind is amazing, and this book will all, forever hold one of my favorite opening sections. Um, uh, not not to mention, I see very clearly all the stuff with the sister that's in the room, where we're basically a camera that's in the room with her. Um, all that stuff is very vivid in my mind. And it's one of those things where I will, it's, it's another one of those things as an author that I will continue to try to latch on to what makes that scene work. Because it's a narrative, omniscient, uh, a godlike POV that is very hard to pull off, especially in this day and age, since we've gotten past the, the age of Victorian literature. But so that's number four. Next up, we have The Changeling by Victor Laval give you guys a chance to click away or to click to the next book. Uh, in The Changeling, there's a scene where our main character goes out to this island um, to, I, I believe, try to save 
uh, his wife and child, or maybe it's just a child at this point. It's been a while since I read it. What I do remember very specifically about this is there's a scene where, again, spoilers, this is a huge spoiler here, uh, there's this huge troll-like monster that just starts throwing trees at people. Um, the scene is very clear in my in my mind. In fact, the the troll, the monster, the the giant, whatever the heck it was, was very clear. And Laval made it believable that this kind of creature could actually exist in our time frame, um, given the not the excuses, but given the reasoning um, that it was there. And I appreciated that. I, but that scene alone, the the tossing of the trees, was just majestic as fuck. Um, I just pictured this, you know, creature, and in, in the scene I'm talking about, you don't even see the monster himself. He's behind the hill, and just the trees are coming over the hill while this guy's trying to get away on a boat. It's a fantastic, fantastic scene. Alright, at number two, we are talking about Eleanor by Jason Gurley. Um, the, the entirety of this book is very clear in my head, uh, but there's a speen, a, a speen. There's a scene, especially, where the landscape, it's the scene with the dinosaurs when the, uh, when the meteors start coming down. This book is an extended allegory or metaphor for depression, postpartum depression, but I don't think it's postpartum in this. Um, it's just the death of a child. Uh, well, I, I know there's two, two completely different things. The death of a child and uh, depression that happens right after pregnancy. The, the babies left them and... Uh, they feel like their world is crumbling. Um, they have no... The life is worthless kind of deal. Uh, I know those two completely different things, but I, I think there was a sense of postpartum depression also, also that is brought up, and then on top of that, to lose one of the kids. But the... Uh, and the book opens that way, if you're worried about spoilers. Again, there's going to be spoilers throughout. So, um, But with this one, there's a scene especially where you're in the mother's world... And you have this this landscape that's almost like prehistoric kind of deal, and you got these these huge roaming dinosaurs, monsters, whatever, and they're the meteors are coming down and rain, raining, you know, death and tragedy all over the place. And the the scene sticks with me so well. The first off, Gurley does a terrific job throughout the whole book, making impossible things feel possible. Uh, the way he he writes the allusions to uh, depression and sadness and all that, and personifies all these things is fantastic. But that one scene with the uh, anytime people ask me about you know my favorite scenes, it's one of the scenes that pops up clearest to me is that scene. And if they haven't read the book, I usually don't talk about it too much because it's a huge spoiler um, when you do get in there and try to read the book. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic scene. And if you have this is a very underrated book. You hear very little about it these days. Um, I highly recommend everybody go out and try this one. Um, I, I gave it a shout out in my video, uh, like I think it was top five books, um, the uh, underrated books, maybe that was it, I don't know. And finally, at number five, I could do, no, number one, sorry, I could do an entire list based on Stephen King stuff. So if you guys want to see that one, my top five favorite Stephen King scenes, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. But uh, he's not on this list because I could do him just by himself. Just like last time, uh, everybody's like, you should do the top five Stephen King stories. After last week when I did top five short stories, I've done top five Stephen King short stories. So um, it, the video is already up on the channel. With this one, I have not done uh, my top five favorite Stephen King scene. So if you guys want to see that like next week, let me know. Um, but yeah, Night Film is number one. I talk about this incessantly. Uh, I, I, I can't get over it. It's one of the most powerful scenes I have ever read. Uh, again, giving you a chance to click away. Uh, your, your time is now. But the scene on the bridge, there's, I don't want to go into it too much detail, but it's a, Around the part where the book starts to get disorienting and it becomes crazy, there's a scene where she, where he, Scott, is trapped in a, a box um, at one point in time. I still have to, I have to reread it, so it's still kind of muddy in my brain with what happens first. But I think it's right after Scott ends up investigating the studios on Stanislav Cordo Cordova's uh, property. He ends up out on this bridge, and there's a thing on the bridge. I. 
I don't think I've ever seen a, char a creature or a character that I had no visual representation for, no movie to think of, no actor to think of, that I've seen it so clearly. Now, did I see it the same way that Marisha Pessel did when she wrote the book? Maybe, maybe not, but it seems so perfectly defined. That and the scene with the box, it's probably tied here, but the scene that sticks with me the most, um, and I know that, that that doesn't mean tied, that means, you know, this this is the more important one, but it's just that scene on the bridge. It is so wonderfully, epically done. The writing is on the simpler side, but that scene evokes terror, dread, um, curiosity, because I want to get closer, and there's nothing else in the book about that, about that scene. It's just there. Uh, it's like something that Scott has stumbled upon and it just com completely unnerves him. And if you ever read this and you read the scene, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Most people I talk to about it go, yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a scene. Just like when uh, um, we're talking about most disturbing scenes, I think I've already done this video, but in Joe Hill's uh, heart-shaped box, there's a very simple scene of a dude just sitting in a hallway. Um, and it's one of the scariest things I've ever read. So if, if you're if you're a an author uh, that wants to write big moments or you know meaningful scenes, take take to heart the fact that most of the time the stuff is it's just happy accidents um, when we do things that well. Because I think uh, after a certain time you can polish something you can polish something too much and you can wear down the edges and it is less dramatic and less meaningful. Um, if that makes sense. But, uh, so this is my top five favorite scenes. Maybe not top five, but it's the five big ones. I could at least do it, at least another two episodes. I could do a top 15 kind of deal. But I would love to hear from you guys. Uh, do me a favor. If you're going to spoil books, uh, instead of just giving vague stuff, say spoiler for and every single book that you're going to spoil at the very top of your comment, maybe in all caps, but, uh, yeah, do that. I definitely want to hear from you guys, but make sure... I also don't want to spoil a whole bunch of books for people. So, uh, and this one's a little more important because these scenes, I feel, are important to these books. But, uh, yeah, leave all your comments down there in the doobly-doo. Let me know whether or not you liked the video, that kind of thing. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been the Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!